Hey friends, we're in Luke chapter 11 day, continuing on in this incredible story about Jesus that was written by a guy by the name of Luke, a doctor, a physician who uh, is an outstanding journalist, encountered Paul on one of Paul's missionary journeys, on a boat with him, probably learned a lot about Jesus from Paul, and then did a lot of investigation to put together this story about Jesus. And we see that Luke took an approach where he talked about, first of all, the works of Jesus, miracles that he did, and then now the teachings of Jesus. He starts into Luke 11. This is full board teaching for the next several chapters. And then finally, the mission of Jesus being accomplished on the cross and in his resurrection. Today, we look at Luke 11, a number of different things that Jesus is teaching his disciples to prepare them to carry on this mission, this, this new movement. And uh, in the midst of this, he has this small section about light and darkness. He talks about how light is not supposed to be something hidden. You don't take light or a candle and light it and then put it under a bowl. And then he turns around and he says, your eyes are the light to your soul. What you let into your eyes is what lights your soul up. So if your eyes are healthy, your soul is full of light. If your eyes are unhealthy, your soul is going to be filled with darkness. And then verse 35 says, see to it then that the light within you is not darkness. See to it, in other words, that the things you let in through your eyes and your ears are the things that light your soul, not darken it. Years ago when I was growing up in Columbus, we lived in this farming community that was outside the east side of Columbus. It's called Pickerington. Now it's a massive suburb with all kinds of things. But then it was just a bunch of farms and a bunch of communities, a bunch of areas that people lived um, with small with one school at the time I was in first grade. And a few years as I was in elementary school, there was at the exit ramp that went off into this farming community, there was an investor who was building this massive hotel. He, he had the foresight and the vision to know that this was going to become quite a hot spot down the road. And he was building the very first hotel for that region. This was a massive hotel. At least it was to me. It was about three or four stories high. It, was, it looked like it had 100 and 200 rooms in it. The structure was big. It was going to take over this whole intersection at the end of the exit ramp. And people were excited about having this hotel for their friends and family to stay at when they came to visit. Well, halfway through the construction project, this developer and his wife ended up filing for divorce. It stopped the development project halfway through the building. And all he had was a shell, cement shell, no windows yet, no structure yet inside. And the divorce proceedings lasted a long time in court and the building never got built. In fact, it got split between the assets. The thing sat there as an eyesore for many, many years. And finally, somebody bought the land and tore it down. And nowadays, now there's a whole development area on the end of this exit with two hotels in it, some other places to eat and so forth. It fascinated me to discover that the divorce was caused by the man, the, the investor, having an affair. And so the darkness that he let in his eyes affected his soul and hurt everything in his life. Now, we can talk about the forgiveness of Jesus. We can talk about how he, I don't know what happened to that man or that wife or anything, but that eyesore was a perfect visual demonstration of what happens when we let darkness in. It, when we allow our eyes to be attracted to things that are not ours to have. We're allowing darkness into our souls. And then by taking action on that darkness, that sin, we're creating destruction from within. Jesus warns his followers, and especially his disciples, to make sure the things you let into your life are light to your soul, not darkness. What a word for all of us. <laughs> what a teaching that we all need to hear to make sure we're protecting our eyes from what they're seeing, make sure we're protecting our ears from what they're hearing, make sure we're removing things in our own environments that bring darkness to our souls. I know how hard that is. And it's difficult in a world that loves to fill us with darkness. If you're watching this on social media, 
this may be the only thing light on the page that you clicked on. Yet it's our responsibility to guard what goes into ourselves. I remember an old little kid song in children's church. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Good word for us today to make sure we're protecting what goes into our souls. Have a great day. We'll see you again next time.